when you are, you'll give us the indication that we're going. Looks like we're getting ready to stream. Yes, uh, we're currently uh, live for the attendees and the YouTube stream is being prepared right now. All right, so may I start then? We, we had some people that wanted to make public comments and they weren't available at uh, 515. Oh. Would it be possible to let them do that now? Well, they'll have a chance to be able to make public comment. <clears throat> okay, so the YouTube stream is up and running right now. I'll ask IT staff again. Are we ready okay, so to go? Team is up and running right now. Yes. Yeah. I'll ask okay. IT staff again. Are we ready? Okay, so All right. Team well, team right. Well, right this time, yes, everything is ready. We'll reconvene back and open session from closed session. Uh, there was. Okay, so this Ryan keeps cutting out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I cut out. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, and it's better. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. yes. You're broken. You're breaking up though. I can hear some words and you break up. Ryan, you may want to turn off your video so we just have your audio. That may help with the signal from your home. Okay, so can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. so I, again, um, uh, fellow board members, please make sure your microphone is muted. It looks like everybody is. So at this time, we'll reconvene into open session from closed session. There was no action taken in closed session to report at this time. All right, at this time, uh, I'd ask. Ask everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And once we have the, uh, the flag <laughs> showing, then we'll begin. All right. So, hey, please, put your hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the stipulated agreement of student in K20-01. Is there a motion? I move. Okay. Motion by Trustee Garcia. Is there a second? I'll second that. Do I have a second for approving the stipulated extension agreement? Uh, so you'll need yes, to unmute I'll for second. this. I'll give you a I'll Moment second that, Ryan. Jay, you'll need to unmute. Thank you, Jay. You need to unmute your microphone so you can vote. 
a second. It's not there. It is. No, it says mute. I can't get it unmute. You're good, Jay. No, you can hear me. You're, you're fine. You're okay, good. Okay, Thank you. so all those in favor, and I'll, I'll start with. We need our student board members to unmute as well. This is good. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. My bad. So look, all right. So then, uh, for our student board members, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. So it looks like they support approval. And now, now for our elected board members, uh, you're breaking up. If you support the motion, um, indicate by saying aye. 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 Or your agreement with the motion. Okay, so that sounds like unanimous. And so now we will move on to communication and recognition. Uh, and I'll just leave it open for any of my board members that wish to make comment. I'll make a short comment. I just uh, hope that the kids aren't suffering too much. Uh, I know this has been an awful topsy turvy thing for them and hope they're managing with their life. I feel like I've been locked up in a cage. It's a good thing I have a dog. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Okay, any other board members? Any other board yes, members? Yes, I'd like comments? to wish everybody uh, to stay healthy and to uh, stay stay put and contained and follow uh, COVID nineteen directions, so we will not uh, make it any worse than it already is. Thank you. Diana, do you have anything to add? Yes, I just want to make sure that everybody stay safe, wash your hands, uh, social distancing. We, you know, we see so much of it now. Um, there was a death in our community, and it was just awful what we hear, you know. And just you never know. These people were always home like they were saying, and, and it just, it came to them at home. And I just can't emphasize enough, just stay home for a little bit, you know? Don't take your kids to the post office, please. And I just hope that everybody's home safe. Thank you. And then if I may add, I, I, first of all, I apologize for not having video. I live in the country where we don't have a direct uh, internet connection. It comes via radio satellite. Um, when the wind blows, it makes it uh, harder uh, uh, to have good bandwidth. So that's what I'm dealing with. So forgive that. Having said that, I'd like to say that I'm incredibly proud of all of our teachers who do exactly to deal with this, and yet uh, we've managed to uh, keep students. Our first priority is should be, and there are many students, especially our seniors, who are losing out on things that uh, that they they always expected they would have, and yet they're taking that with a, a great deal of strength and understanding the important role that they play in this process as we as a country try to come through this together. So I'm proud of everyone, and uh, I'm confident that we'll come out stronger on the other side of this uh, and better for having gone through it. We just need to try and mitigate the damage to to our fellow countrymen and, and, and fellow human beings worldwide. So I'm proud to be a part of this team and look forward to continue working to work our way through this. So thank, thank you. And at this time, then we'll move on to our student board member comments. Uh, we'll start with Christian from Central. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. Yes. All yes. right. So uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to see that everyone's safe and sound, especially during this horrible times. And well, for the month, for the past month, Central, uh, there's been like no school. So, but we've been adapting to the new learning. Uh, even though most students were able to like, we've been like doing it throughout the whole school year, but we, we've been just adapting into it. And also we've been promoting that the school year is not over yet. Because most students think that 
there's no school, so it's not done. So, so we've been implementing that. And our A is B, we've been trying to think of graduation ideas because it's not fair that seniors went through 12 years of school just not to walk. So we asked you guys if you guys could please keep that into consideration that even if, if, even if it's extended or on pause, just please take that into consideration because it's not fair that everyone else got to walk and not us. So, and yes, that's thank you, thank you for my time. That's it. Uh, Christian, thank you. And I can assure thank you good. that um, potential loss of graduation and things like that are not lost on us. Um, we realize what an important rite of passage that is, and we are already in the process of coming up with a variety of some sort of graduation experience, even, even in this difficult time. It's not your fault that this happened when it did, and so we want to do everything we can to make it. As soon as we have concrete plans, uh, you'll be the first to know, know about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And so Thanks. I'll ask Aiden. What was that? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Are you there, Hayden? Go ahead. You, you, we're ready for yes. your comment. Okay. Um, so Southwest High School has, as we all know, um, has been closed, but as our central counterparts, we have adjusted very well to our online and distance learning that we've all kind of come to have to do throughout this past two weeks. Um, our students are not necessarily happy, but they are definitely, I think, satisfied with the education that they're getting currently and have had minimal complaints at least in my reaching out and asking opinions of how they feel during this quarantine period. Our ASB has come up with different posts and different inspirational like sayings, if you will, on our social medias in order to keep morale high and a sense of community high, especially in a hard time like this, as well as giving out announcements for gathering Chromebooks or hotspots or different um, services that our students can get in order to make this quarantine adjustment as easy as possible. Our Southwest Instagram page that is not run by our ASB, but is just our general Southwest Instagram page has also come up with a distance learning or social distancing spirit week um, where all our students were challenged and given prompts on like different things to do or different outfits to wear during a set week and to submit these pictures to the Instagram account in order for that Instagram account to post them and show off kind of how our school is still connected even though we're not in person together. We are sincerely hopeful that this quarantine ends soon and that everybody remembers to wash their hands and practice social distancing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Halsey. We appreciate that. Um, and so now, now we'll move on to Mr. Montañez. Uh, Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, so far yes, now, Desert Oasis Panthers, I believe we've been doing good. Like as a school, I know we could get through this because DO Panthers are made strong. And the online teaching, I was confused with it. And I realized that I could set up for notifications. So as soon as they post a assignment, I could get an alert. So that was pretty easy. I didn't know I could mess with the settings on there. And all together as a school, or just as a whole community for the Imperial Valley. I believe this COVID-19, we could just get through it. Just the basics, wash your hands or touch your face. Um, you can still communicate like as we're doing right now. That's a good way to stay in touch too. And just the school's been doing good all in one. Really no worries. 
I text my fellow classmates and I ask them about uh, how they're doing or just how the work doing or if I need help, they would help me. And some agree, some disagree, but altogether, um, it's been good. All right. Well, thank you. We appreciate that, Jude. And thank if there's you. nothing else to add, we'll move on to Dr. Andrus for the superintendent's report. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you, Mr. Childers. Appreciate everyone um, as we work through some technical difficulties. Um, this, uh, this is all new to all of us. We've had some practice runs and practices of using this online technology um, in classrooms. It's been happening. We've been using Google Meet. We've used a, different versions of Zoom and other ways to communicate. This is our first effort at a, a, a teleconference or video um, uh, uh, board meeting as we're going through the process and we're doing the best we can. So thank you for your patience, those of you who are watching the community and those who are participating um, with us here. Um, just a couple quick updates. This has been, as you know, a very, very busy month since our last board meeting on March 10th. Um, just as you recall, on March 10th, uh, we had just experienced a couple of really challenging experiences with safety matters at our schools. We had some uh, social media posts that were caused a lot of fear in our community, uh, so much fear that we had to close our schools uh, before we could even address the actual concerns. And so we were coming off of that and we'd had a special board meeting actually um, on, the, on the 10th, we took some action to create a subcommittee. But right away, we had these new challenges with the school closures and the, and the, the stay-at-home orders that it came. So just as a, as, as a note of what occurred is that week of March, um, March 9th is when the governor issued some of these declarations for us. Um, and then the stay-at-home order came right thereafter. And we saw other districts closing their campus doors as early as the 13th of March. Um, that we had a special board meeting on, on the 16th, which gave the superintendent authority to close the schools as needed and to take, execute certain contracts as needed um, so we could keep the business of the district moving forward without interruption. And so as early as the 17th, we closed our campuses and started food service programs. Um, distance learning at, uh, began on the 23rd, a huge effort by our teachers, very, very proud of our teachers and students to move quickly, literally four school days later, um, we were back in business, uh, extending learning opportunities, solving issues around connectivity and devices and all those types of things. So tre tremendous effort by our school site staffs to get devices out, our teachers to create classrooms online. Many had never done that. And so I'm very proud of our teachers and our staff that quickly did this. Um, in many cases, we're one of the fastest turned districts in the community that went from a, a classroom setting to an online learning setting where we have some ex expectations where we're expected to continue learning. And that's been the case. Um, we, did have, um, we did have to come forward and, and on April 1st had to issue this extension of our closure based on the guidance we received from the state of California. Um, we hope that you know, on, on a prayer and, and whatever we can muster that um, that, that stay at home order is lifted before the graduation dates in June. Um, so we're very hopeful um, that that happens, but if it doesn't, we are prepared and preparing for how do we address the end of the school year that way. Um, and that's not, it's, it's more than just graduation. That's kind of one of our big things, but we also have to deal with collecting textbooks and um, getting ready for summer school. That's also part of the end of the year. So staff and is working through all that. I appreciate our students in, in the ASB organizations that are brainstorming ideas for graduation. It is a very important ceremony and in essence rite of passage that we do want to extend to our students in some way. So we look, we're, we'll find a solution to that. And then as recently as just yesterday, the district provided guidance to our teachers about issuing grades. How will we issue grades? Um, what counts? We have a whole third quarter where we have effective grades of in-class instruction. And now the fourth quarter is a distance learning model. So we recognize there are challenges for opportunities for students. But as long as students are doing their best to try and connect and their best effort to turn things in, um, we'll be able to see that. A couple of teachers have actually invited me to visit their classrooms and have made me a co-teacher in their Google Classroom. And so in my Google Drive, I'm seeing students submit work. I saw students um, graphing uh, equations today and problem, math problems that they're solving because I am in essence a co-teacher and this teacher invited me into the classroom. And so I too am seeing some of the work that's coming in and it's very impressive. Um, these are activities where a student is simply writing on a piece of uh, notebook paper, taking a picture with their phone and uploading it right into Google Classroom off their phone. So there's lots of ways that we can continue learning 
um, even though we're not face to face. And we do miss that social interaction. We really miss seeing our students, having them on campus, tremendous energy when they're there. Um, but don't be mistaken. As someone else I read online, they said, if you listen really carefully, you can hear this hum. It's humming. And those are teachers working and students learning. And so it's out there in our community as students make that effort. So um, two last things real quick. Um, tremendous effort uh, at the district level. Um, we have a federal program review that comes in every once in a while. They came and chose us this year. Um, we just completed all of that federal program monitoring and got notice today that we completed all their expectations. So that may not sound like a big deal, but for those involved, that is a significant achievement to complete the federal program monitoring audit that, uh, that occurred earlier this year in, um, started in February and it ended in the first part of March. Uh, and then lastly, just a special thanks to our tech team, um, our technology team. Actually, we have some IT members who are on this call. Um, they're hidden right now, but they've been working to, one, prepare Chromebooks for distribution system-wide. Every couple of days, our principals are asking for more devices, and they're out there working, preparing those devices for distribution. Um, to date, we've distributed over 1,200, was my last count, of devices distributed to our students. So special thanks to the tech team and also for making this, this meeting run today. So that concludes my report. Um, thank you for everyone and all of your efforts that you're doing to make this go well. Dr. Andrews, uh, thank you. And so at this time, uh, we have on the agenda one of our showcases. I think that it has been an objective of uh, the administration and the board to try and maintain as much normalcy as we can, even in these unprecedented times. Um, hence the Pledge of Allegiance, even though we were all in different places and uh, we had to use an, a video flag, we just wanted to maintain some normalcy. And so in that vein, um, we're gonna move forward with a, a show like we have at many board meetings. Um, and Mr. Phillips is gonna be about some of the great things that have been happening in Southwest and because people need to understand that many staff, uh, great teachers and, and classified folks, everybody there is doing some wonderful things. And so Mr. Phillips, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to you to make the public aware of, of the great things going on at Southwest, despite the recent headlines in the newspaper. You know, it's an honor to do so, President Childers, because um, as you know, this school's had its more than its share of adversity over the last month. Um, I feel like we've had uh, a decade's worth of challenges uh, since February. However, coincidentally, during February, um, so, oh, I'm looking for my desktop here. Pardon me. All right, I'm uh, having to let Zoom access and I'm going to have to quit and then rejoin. I do apologize. So technical difficulty, one of those challenges as we're trying to sort out how to, to make this work on the platform. He'll be back in just a minute. Yes. Yes, we'll give Mr. Phillips uh, at least make sure this technology was right, that uh, in the meetings I was in, we never did one where there was a... Uh, um, All right. A, there he is. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. Slide screen or show or whatever. So, yeah, thank so you, I'm going to share the screen. Well, go ahead, please. And okay. All right. So, as I was saying, uh, it's really an honor to be able to do this to share that um, indeed some spectacular things have been happening at Southwest High School. Before I get uh, going, I just wanna pause and ask if I can be heard okay, and if you are now currently seeing my screen spotlight on Southwest High. I see it. Okay. I see it perfectly, I it looks it. great. Awesome. So we have some great news. Sandra Lopez Tamoris uh, was selected as an AXA Teacher of the Year. We're very, very proud of her work in special education. She's truly a gifted leader on campus. And so um, I nominated her and I was delighted to see that she was selected as teacher of the year. 
Um, obviously that gala has been postponed, but we'll find a suitable way to celebrate Sandra's great contribution to our district. There's um, a rich history that's been going on at Southwest High School and it happens in this building right here. The Jimmy Cannon Theater for the Performing Arts at Southwest. And I'd like to draw everybody's attention to that beautiful sign that now adorns this magnificent building. Uh, this was a project that was uh, born of a partnership between the Rainforest Art Project and our Southwest High School art students under the direction of Jackie Platus. Uh, this beautiful mosaic artwork was designed and created by our, our students and now um, it's welcoming the community to our theater. And this was the gala uh, where we unveiled, unveiled the sign back in December. If you go back to 2014, uh, the production was Legally Blonde. I attended Shrek as an audience member. My son was a uh, violinist in the pit. Um, absolutely tremendous production. Of course, uh, the unforgettable Willy Wonka in 2018. And then my favorite Southwest musical is always the last one we did. In this case, it was the Wizard of Oz, which was just an absolute joy uh, to behold. And part of the story is if you look at the gentleman in the center holding Toto, this is Mr. Demeter Marinov. He is our director. Um, this is his IMDB. As you can see, he is an accomplished Hollywood actor writer, musician. He recently had a supporting role in Green Book. Um, I highly recommend that movie to everyone. Um, and in the, on the left part of the screen, this is Demeter with our students um, very, very early on in the production. And here he is sharing with him, with our students, his experience that we really do have, in his words, we are a hidden gem, a diamond in the rough, the talent that our students have. He mentions that our students are unassuming. Um, they don't really know how great they are. And so with his work and the work of um, our producer and, and teacher, Chris Spanos, um, that's why this magic can happen on the stage. Here's the Savapa team, Mr. Spanos, Ms. Brooks, uh, Mr. Spataro, um, Ms. Platis and Ms. DuBose. And when you put it all together, it's a great team that really put together a spectacular musical performance. And so um, that's the kind of, the, this is the thing that we miss more than anything. I know that we hear from our students, it is that social interaction that you, the, it, you just can't replace it, which is why it's important to have meetings like these where we can see each other and hear each other and talk to each other. And then I'm going to close by saying um, we had a truly outstanding uh, fair, and this is just a short video that I was hoping would play. There we go. I smell money at the auction. <laughs> Our students did very well. It's Mrs. Mayo.
Mmm, bacon. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so um, that's a little. Uh, it it um, it's uh, it's tough to see that because that's what we miss. That's what we miss. That's what we miss. Check check out my check out my cup. Oh, that is an old logo. <laughs> wow. Now, where where are we that again? Most people don't even know what they're getting that audio from, guys. <laughs> so whoever they are, they muted it. Um, Mr. Phillips. Hello, did, did yes, sir. That conclude your presentation. That or, does conclude my presentation. Um, I did. Timothy, I, how you doing, man? Fresh Christian. Okay, well, thank well, you, Mr. Good. Phillips, for the presentation. Woke up today. It's raining hard. It's been pouring, and it's off and on. It's been pouring. Um, where, where is that audio coming? Honest question: Have you lost weight or gained weight since you've been <laughs> It was probably ham radios. Right. Ham operators. Oh man, Carlos cooking. We're doing uh, good. Right. I don't it's know. Too much, too much Mexican food for you. It looks like I'm everybody missing. on this call is muted. <laughs> Matt, are you I'm here? Good. I'm going to miss people. I don't like you. I miss everyone. I to the host, please don't don't mute me. I'm not. It's not me. It's not coming from me. I'm calling yeah. phys physical distance. I mean, those don't sound like voices of any of our staff or students that I'm aware of. Um, but nonetheless, we'll soldier on and hopefully we'll be able to filter it out. Mr. Phillips, did I understand that you are done with your, your presentation? Yes. Okay, I see a thumbs up. So thank you. Mr. Phillips, and this is I, Angel I'd like from to IT. say that. Um, Yes, Angel. Mr. F Mr. Phillips, um, I think you need to mute or close a tab on your laptop because I think the audio might be coming from you. From you. All right, guys, we figured it out. Okay, that was my fault. It was because the video was continuing to play. So I apologize for that. Thank you, uh, and, um, Roberto caught that. Okay, so the problem was I, I did not close the tab, and so that's what caused that. It was just, it was innocent. It was the video. Matt, no, Matt, no need to apologize. We're all dealing with uh, uh, technology that most of us aren't familiar using, so, so please, no need to apologize. Okay. We thank you for the presentation. I, I would like to say that we had some outstanding uh, performances uh, by students from Southwest Madison Mills had yep. the Supreme Grand Champion goat, uh, which I'd like to, because I heard Jay when he saw a picture of a goat say bacon. Uh, Jay mm -hmm. actually bacon comes from pigs, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, <laughs> in showmanship, which is a huge deal, um, and it shows just uh, what a true sportsman she is in, in art of a variety of of livestock and folk and Mrs. Body have uh, created with our students there at Southwest. And, and I mentioned Madison because that's the one I'm most familiar with, but I know we had others. one sliver of all the great things going on at, at Southwest. So thank you for highlighting that, Mr. Phillips. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right. And so now at this point, we will uh, be moving on to the public comment session uh, of our meeting. Uh, and, and let me just check. Just update my list. Uh, it looks like that we. we we had two requests for public comment, and so, so we will start with um, Jackie Valadez, of course, one of our fantastic teachers at Southwest. So Jackie, if you're there, we'll give you a moment to unmute or whatever you need.
need to do. Okay, good evening. Just let me know when we're ready. You're good, you can go ahead and talk, Jackie. Okay, great. Um, good evening, board members, Superintendent, Superintendent Andrus, colleagues, and community members. My name is Jackie Valadez, reporting from my living room office in Brawley. I am a 13 year employee at Central Union High School District as a career technical education teacher at Southwest High School and advisor for Southwest High School HOSA Future Health Professional. As a CTE teacher, I have the privilege of working with students on curricular units pertaining to employability skills, such as creation of their first resume and preparing for job interviews. Resumes and job interviews are necessary for prospective employers to evaluate the candidate for the job opening. Can the candidate perform the duties that the job requires? However, employers often provide feedback that the soft skills are the most critical skills they seek in a prospective employee. Can the candidate solve problems, communicate with clients and manage their time? How do we best prepare our students for the real world? In the classroom, we use guest speakers to provide context to the workplace tasks, workplace critical thinking scenarios and student placement through work-based learning experiences. Today, we are faced with converting our traditional classroom space into a new digital distant learning environment. Nothing that we have ever done to the extent that it is being done today. Because of our circumstances, we could retreat and just get by, or we can confront the educational challenges of today and practices of problem solvers, communicators, and with the attitude of being responsible. I am proud to be associated with teachers who gathered their collective strength to be one of the first local districts to roll out distance learning that engaged our students and didn't leave them behind. Every day presents challenges, both personally and professionally. We are banded together as CUHSD to do our best every day to support our students so they feel engaged, excited, and supported in their new learning environment. Your teachers are demonstrating their commitment to CUHSD, our students, and the community we serve by demonstrating their commitment to excellence during this time of challenge. Another important soft skill we demonstrate to our students is resiliency, the ability to overcome or adjust easily to change. By example, we are guiding our students through the, this crisis to provide normalcy so they can develop the ability to adjust to this change also. I am encouraging the board to meet with EXTA negotiators in the near future to speed up the negotiations process. By working together, we can have a bit of certainty in this world of uncertainty. I'm wishing you all at, on our CUHSD community safety and health, and thank you for your time. Jackie, thank you very much for those comments. And uh, thank you for the wonderful work you do and, and the setting. And so now we'll move on to the next comment, which is Mrs. Diane Richmond, who is one of our ASB clerks at Southwest High School. Um, one of those places that uh, students love to see and make their day go a little bit better. And so, Diane, at this time.
Richmond, we see that your um, your name, which tells me that you're there. You may not have video. Maybe you're having issues like I am, uh, but we're ready for a comment. It looks like you're um, on stage, so to speak. This is Richmond. Can you hear us? I can hear you, but for some reason I can't get out get my video to start. Well, I would say don't worry about the video. Like like me, I, I'm not able to use my video uh, because of a difficulty with my connection. But we can hear you, so please go ahead and make your comment. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, during this time. Uh, as a classified employee, you know, we have met uh, so many challenges, um, not only as a classified worker, but also for our students and parents. And every day has been a new challenge. I mean, we're having to uh, go as it comes. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, we're learning to meet challenges every day. It's every day that we have to, uh, something comes up and we have to act on it and do the best that we can for our students. So I'm just saying uh, on behalf of our classified employees, uh, we're hanging in there, we're trying our best. And I hope that the district uh, uh, sees all these challenges that our classified workers are going through. Absolutely, Mrs. Richmond. Uh, does that con does that conclude your comment? Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the work that you and all of our classified staff, and, and of course our teachers as well, are doing on the front lines of this as we are adjusting, as you said, on a day by day, really minute by minute basis, in trying to find um, the best means and modes of. Um, oh, there I see your picture a little bit, or at least your glasses sort of peeking over your computer. <laughs> Computer. Oh, oh yeah, um, but, but again, we, we thank you for the, the role you're playing. <laughs> we thank you for the role you're playing in helping meet the needs of our students and teachers and uh, parents and community at large. Um, and so thank you and, and all of your um, uh, colleagues. Thank you. All right. And so now um, that those are all of the uh, public comments that I was aware of, I would ask that if any of our staff has become aware of other requests for public comment, please let me know that now or we'll move on. And if another public comment uh, comes up while we're in the, the midst of our discussion about uh, various items, I will entertain that at any time uh, because of the uh, unique nature of today's meeting, okay? So uh, um, I raised my hand. So I having said that, then we will move on to the, oh, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Just real quick, um, I, 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 want, I failed to mention this earlier. I, I need to draw some attention to one of our um, student board members. Uh, this, uh, this is not another comment, but I do want to bring it up. Uh, one of our, our principal reminded me. Um, we cannot understand you, Doctor. Okay, we'll wait for my connection. Maybe I'll close my video. Hopefully that will help with my connection. Yeah, I can hear you very well, Dr. Andrews. Okay. So just briefly, I just want to share um, some great news that Jude Montañez, who is our student board member from Desert Oasis, I want to remind folks to let you know that he was chosen first student from Desert Oasis to go to Boys State, um, attending in Sacramento for this week, of course, pending the, the lifting of the pandemic. But if Boys State continues on, Jude Montañez was selected to go. So yeah, you can see all the applause going on there for you. Congratulations. That's a huge effort and recognition. Uh, not only Thank you but also for your school as well. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Yes, Jude, that is an outstanding achievement and uh, something that I hope all of your fellow schoolmates at Desert Oasis understand what a, what a momentous achievement that is for not just you, but the school and our district. Many congratulations, my friend. Thank you. The, they were told that this was Dio's first time participating in this. So I was pretty excited for that. That is, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. So congratulations. Thank you. All right. So now I will move on 
to the approval of the agenda. Uh, do I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? At this time, I would ask all of my fellow board members and student board members to please unmute your microphones. I move that we approve the agenda. I'll second that. I'll third. Okay, so we have a motion from Trustee Jimenez, a second uh, from Trustee Jones. So at this time, I will uh, acknowledge the votes from our student board members. All student board members aye. in favor of approval of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so that sounds unanimous. So that is the preference of our student board, member, board members. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries on the consent agenda will be handled via one motion and vote unless uh, there's a request to have an item pulled. So at this time, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Uh, now I would ask for the, actually on this one, let me see. This is is one that does not have the, oh, I'm sorry, it does, the preferential vote by student board members. So student board members, if you could please uh, uh, signify your approval by saying aye. 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 And that sounded unanimous. And so now I will entertain the vote of my elected board members. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, that too was unanimous. And so just to be clear, uh, it's raining. For our student board members, you will vote on the first portion and then, but on the second portion where I ask for a vote from our elected board members, you will not vote, okay? Either way, it was unanimous uh, among both uh, subsets of our board. All right, so approval of the personnel report. Is there a motion for the approval of the personnel report? I'll make a motion to approve the personnel report. Okay. Moved by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee uh, Garcia Ruiz. This is not one upon which our student board members will vote, so it'll just be our elected board members. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to the annual statement of need for 30 day substitute and an emergency designated. Subjects, career technical education, and 30 day substitute um, uh, student board input from this. So I'll accept a motion from my fellow board members. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the necessity of 30 days. Okay, motion by Trustee Jones. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, second by Trustee Jimenez. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, third item, declaration of need for fully qualified educators. Again, uh, one where there will be no student vote. Do I have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. We, go ahead. I'll make a motion that we have a declaration for need for I qualified forgot. educators. Yeah. I'm sorry. Fully qualified educators. Okay, that's a motion by Trustee Jones, second by Trustee Jimenez. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, I, I couldn't hear Diana, but I aye. saw her, 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 her mouth move, not yours, so I apologize. All right, number four, and this, this is an item for which we will um, have a student vote as well. So approval of the adoption of the science instructional materials. Dr. Andrus, is there any? Any discussion on this item? You kind of broke up. You, you broke up a little bit, but I think you're asking what was our process to go through with this. No, um, my question was: Do we need to have a discussion on this item, or is there any presentation? There is no presentation um, on this item. Uh, just as a quick way of uh, guidance on this, um, we have had uh, funds available and been through a review process. Uh, for a few years for new science materials as the next generation science standards came out. Um, even though they came out a little while ago, the textbook authors took their time getting together really worthwhile materials. 
Um, our teachers took a, not an extra amount of time, but they did take an extra year or so to make the determination of what they really wanted to select. So they were very careful in the process. We appreciate their determination to, to bring this recommendation forward. And so the materials that are presented uh, that have been posted on the website for review um, have been fully reviewed and vetted by our, our team and um, have been reviewed by the public um, and those who are interested to come in and learn more. Um, we didn't have much interest coming in to look at what was available uh, by folks, but uh, it's available and completed that full review. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Andrews. And in light of that, um, I, I cannot recall whether, did I ask for a motion and second on that? No, Carol shaking her head no. no. So at this no. time, I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of our um, I'll make, science instructional materials. I'll make a motion for the adoption of the science instructional materials. Okay, I'll, motion by I'll Trustee second, Jones, second by Trustee Jimenez. At this time, I'll entertain a vote, a preferential vote by our student board members. So if I, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and that was just student board members, or should have been. That sounded unanimous. Okay, now, that's okay, Ms. Jones, I wasn't pointing fingers. Um, so now we'll move on to the, the uh, vote of the, the elected board. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and, and I see Diana not only saying it, but raising her hand, which makes it easier. Thank you, that makes it a unanimous vote. And we will move on to... Uh, adoption of a board re resolution ending in 1-6, proclaiming May 13th as day, as California Day of the teacher. Do I have a motion? I move that we adopt the board resolution ending in 16, pro proclaiming May 6, 13, 2020 as California Day of the teacher. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved by Trustee Jimenez, seconded by uh, uh, Trustee Jones. And so uh, this is, there will be a student preferential vote on this. And so we'll do a roll call vote to make that easier. I'll do it myself with uh, Carol recording. And so uh, student board member Esperanza, how do you vote? Wait, you guys are just, why, wait, why are you guys switching the day? So is that what I heard? Are you guys switching the date? Uh, His name is, the student board member is Christian. Ryan, Christian. I was, I was kind of confused you, when you when you were talking. Yeah, it's Christian Esperanza, right? Christian. Yeah. Yeah, and so what my what my uh, what my agenda says is that it is day California Day of the Teacher, which is May 13, twenty twenty. Do you have a date different than that? No. I, I, I thought I heard something else. My bad. No, that's all right. So, uh, are you in favor then of, of such proclamation? Yes. All right. And so, Mr. Halsey? Yes. What's your preferential vote? My vote is yes. Thank you. And Mr. Montani? Yes, yes of course. My vote's yes. So unanimous among our student board members. And so now I'll entertain the vote of my uh, fellow elected board members, uh, starting with Trustee Garcia Ruiz. That's an aye. All right. And, and then Trustee Jones. Yes. Yes. Okay. And my vote is yes or aye and Trustee Jimenez. Uh, that's a hearty yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so now moving on to <laughs> moving on to item number six, board resolution ending in one seven. Almost done. It's I'll make a motion the week of May seventeenth. <laughs> proclaiming the week of May seventeenth through the twenty third as classified school employees week. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, designate the week of May 17 to the 20th as a classified employee week resolution ending in one seven. Yeah, and to be clear, that's ending uh, May 23rd. Thank you, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, motion by Tristan. 
Trustee Jones, second by Trustee Jimenez. And so this is a resolution. So ask for a roll call vote, starting with our student board members, Mr. Esperanza. Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Halsey. Yes. Okay, Mr. Montanez. Yes. All right, thank you. Unanimous among our student board members. Now we'll move on to our elected board members, uh, Trustee Garcia Ruiz. Yes. Trustee Jones. Yes. My vote is yes. Trustee Jimenez. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Moving on now to item number seven, board resolution yeah. ending in 1-8, declaring the day of May 1st as school principals day. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move that we adopt board resolution ended on 1-8, declaring May 1st of this year, 2020, as school principals day. And a, sh a special shout out to Mr. Fernando, Mr. Phillips, and Mr. Lyons. And Mr. Pechtel. And Mr. Pechtel, definitely. <laughs> I'll second that. All right, motion. and so then. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded by Trustee Jimenez and Trustee Jones. I'll call for roll call vote of our student board. Uh, Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Jimenez. Yes. Trustee Phillips. Yes. Trustee Lyons. Yes. Trustee Pechtel. Yes. Trustee Lyons. Yes. Trustee Pechtel. Yes. Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Halsey? Aye. All right. Yes. Mr. Monta Aye. Yes. yes. All right, unanimous among our student board members. Oh, now student, roll call vote among our elected board members. Trustee Jimenez. Yes. My vote is yes. Trustee Jones. Uh, if you said it, Jones, then I vote yes. Okay, yeah, that, that was you. And then uh, Trustee Garcia Ruiz. Yes. All right. Unanimous among the elected board members as well. All right. So now we have a presentation or informational item uh, regarding the budget. And so uh, at this time, I would ask Mr. Preciado if he's ready, willing, and available to um, begin his discussion of uh, the budget outlook in light of all that uh, is going on around us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, President Childers. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, well, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has changed our work and our lives in various ways. And uh, according to the Legislative Anal Analyst Office and the and a letter that I included in the agenda for the from the Department of Finance, the impact to the state of California in terms of revenue is very likely to be at least several billion dollars lower than what we had anticipated in the governor's January budget proposal for 2020-21. At this time, we do not know if this will also impact 1920. The governor has stated in terms of the budget that everything is on the table. And based on the legislative analyst's office analysis, the state budget problem will come from three areas that are all related to the COVID-19 pandemic. First, higher direct costs to respond to the public health emergency. And that will mean state dollars, state revenues to address the, the emergency regarding public health. Second, higher indirect costs as a result of changes in, in, the, in the economy. What I mean by this is higher unemployment, decreased income, more government assistance, and food assistance. Mr. Preciado, if I may, I, I hate to interrupt you, but just so we don't have any further interference, could I ask everyone to please mute your microphone, except Mr. Preciado. Thank you, Mr. Preciado, please continue. Thank, thank you. Uh, and, the, and the third item is lower revenue as a result of changes in the economy. The LAO has estimated that in a typical economic downturn, revenues are lower by tens of billions of dollars across a multi-year period. I don't want to um, share so much drastic news, uh, although 
the state of California does have a $17.5 billion reserve. And granted that the federal government is providing coronavirus relief funds, but we don't know to what extent these funds will alleviate the financial impact of the state of California. So it is anticipated that the state's revenues will come in greatly lower. When and by how much is the million dollar question? As in the past, cash will be king in getting us through these next fiscal downturn. We have seen def deficit factors, funding deferrals, and trigger cuts in the past from the state. So we must prepare for what may come. What is crucial for a school district in terms of weathering out the fiscal storm are controlling expenditures, maintaining cash flow, and conserving, conserving revenues and reserves as much as possible. Obviously, we cannot control state revenues, which at this point in time, based on our second interim, uh, is 97.5% of all of our unrestricted funds. It's a huge amount of our budget, huge amount. The Central Union High School District will be looking at developing a plan that will provide us options as to how deep we need to make these cuts in order to maintain a distro, district's fiscal solvency. As with past deficit reduction plans, we look to our operational budgets or what we may consider to be low hanging fruit in the school site budgets, athletics, transportation, maintenance, operational costs, and capital outlay. Another round of cuts may be necessary, which may include other operations and personnel. And yet if these cuts isn't sufficient as we move through the storm, there could be another plan, uh, another tier of cuts that include program reductions in staff. Again, I don't want to alarm our board that we must plan for what may be coming and we must plan for the worst. Based on our second interim report, we are projecting uh, a general fund reserve of 12.67%, which is much lower than the statewide average of 17%. Unfortunately, the LAO has stated that the COVID-19 impact is projected to be worse than the past two previous recessions. So we are headed into some difficult times and together we must prepare the district for what is to come. Um, so my staff uh, in the fiscal department, in the budget department, maintenance and transportation, we already began uh, be, um, beginning to look at what we can reduce in our budgets as well as also considering school site budgets so that we can begin this process and begin our process of building next year's budget. We won't know what the state budget revenue decreases will be until probably after the summer, uh, after July 15th, which is when our largest part of our state revenue, personal income taxes come due. So I leave you with uh, these thoughts. Uh, Board of Trustees of Century Union High School District. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we are headed into some difficult times um, based on this coronavirus pandemic. Any questions? Well, thank you, Mr. Pressy. I don't know if I may, I have a question to start with and that is typically, um, well, not typically, but we get the May revise in May for a reason and that's because uh, income taxes are filed in April, and so that gives the state time to look at what uh, projected revenues are going to be uh, with real-time data. Uh, it's my understanding that the filing period for taxes has been extended, uh, I believe, into May for the state. Is that correct? Uh, actually, it's uh, July 15th. Oh, July 15th. And Okay. Thank you. So... Uh, uh, as informative as it typically is, given the fact that they won't have that actual data uh, to rely on in making those revisions. I'm sorry, Ryan. I, you, you broke. Did you get so? My question was essentially 
since it's July 15th before we get that real tax data, is the May revise out of the governor's office really going to be very meaningful since they won't have that data? Um, yes, I, I think the state is going to have, and especially the Department of Finance is going to have a very difficult time projecting what the state revenues will be since, again, it's going to be the May revise. Uh, my understanding is that the governor, as a, I've already stated, has, set, has stated that he has put everything on the table. We will not see any categorical funds or special project funds or grants or what have you. I think those are going to be pulled back not knowing what the actual state revenues are going to be. Uh, it puts us in a difficult bind as well, because we don't know what type of budget we should be building, but we still need to make plans as we move forward and make those adjustments as we move forward. As in the past, we've had mid-year trigger cuts. And so those could, it could be a possibility of mid-year trigger cuts again, um, where we need to adjust very quickly as we did with the COVID-19 pandemic in order to make the necessary cuts in the budget um, at that particular time. So it, it becomes very difficult, as you just mentioned, to have any type of projection, even from the governor at its May revise. So uh, trustees, we wanted to bring this um, to, the, to the public and to the, the board in a, in a public session so that um, you would have a chance to ask questions and have any concerns um, brought forward that you might have. Um, we, we wanted to indicate this information as, as we've already started the process, as Mr. Preciado mentioned, of developing a budget for next year, but the guidelines we would normally follow, it's just all been suspended and postponed as it were. So we don't wanna say it's the worst case scenario. Um, we're hopeful that um, we'll have some good news in forms of a patch that comes by way of the federal government or dipping into the reserve that the state has built uh, very wisely. We have that reserve that may help bridge, but we do recognize that many of the, um, the special projects or the grant money that we have been used to in the past couple of years, like things like the CT incentive grant or strong workforce grant, um, the rising uh, effort around uh, supplemental concentration money on all those things, we anticipate those will be um, either suspended or in, or in some cases reduced, especially ongoing dollars. Um, back in January, the governor proposed a 2.29% cost of living adjustment for the 2020 school year. We are estimating that will be zero, that there won't be any cost of living adjustment because there's just no additional money to come forward. Now, we don't know that. Those are just some projections based on what we've heard of the financials. Um, we just wanted, and we're not trying to be doomsday people here in any way. We just want to have it on our radar to be aware of those things so that as we face reductions in services, uh, as we face some of these really difficult challenges that we've had this, we've had a, an early discussion about this. So any other questions from the board? We just wanna make sure that uh, this information is made available based on what we know at this point in time. <clears throat> just, uh, just one remark. Uh, at this point, uh, I applaud both you and uh, Mr. Preciado. Uh, we're gonna attempt to keep it conservative, uh, no doubt. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. I, I think we have to. Uh, the other thing is, uh, without uh, going into great detail, uh, you said cash will be uh, king, I, I, or was it key? No, king. <laughs> King, okay. Uh, we're right now. We're we're okay at the present time. We're meeting our uh, obligations. Uh, currently, we are okay with cash. Uh, as I mentioned, we have twelve point six seven percent reserve that we're projecting for the end of this fiscal year. Having that reserve at that level or higher is going to help us yeah. to sustain and make payments to our vendors, to our contractors, to keep the lights on. That is going to be important. As before, uh, and I think some of you uh, remember, we had ca cash deferrals from the state. That mm -hmm. Some months, the state never paid us what was due to the district. So we had to depend on what we had in the bank. And that's what I think is probably going to happen if the state doesn't have the cash to pay us. They're going to bring back that deferral or do some adjustments based on the LCFF. Maybe they come back with... A, a new gap funding for the LCFF, meaning that maybe they fund us at 
90% instead of the 100%. I, I don't know. That, we don't know that just yet. I'm just speculating what the state will do in order to make those reductions to districts. Thank you. Well, we all lived through 2008 and the reductions and everything there. So I think we can do it again. We're, we're tough. We can suck it up and uh, pull up our big girl panties and go about business. So, so earlier, Ms. Valadez, um, who I think she's still an attendee out there in our audience, uh, she mentioned uh, being part of the family um, and pulling together to get things done. And that's one of the things I do very much appreciate about coming to this district is seeing how when we have faced some very difficult times, um, this organization weathered it very well. I'm sure there were some challenges and some sacrifices that people made, uh, but I think um, this is a hearty organization and hearty people um, that have some resolve, some determination, and we'll be able to get through this. Um, it will be difficult. Um, there will be some challenges and we will have to face those. Um, to share the, the burden of, of how do we get through these tight times. Um, again, we don't have any details, and, and I think it's been wise to help uh, maintain a reserve uh, by the board over the years, because as Mr. Preciado mentioned, if we have a, if the state, you know, has a cash deferral, we still are able to make payroll. You know, we can do that for a short period of time until, until it's depleted, but um, at that point in time, they'll, they'll have some gaps that we'll have to fill, but um, having that is very essential. Um, we will take a deeper dive as we get around the budget and look at um, even projects like the STEM building project. Um, we have bond money that um, is from previous projects, not the STEM building, but from Phoenix Rising and the modernization at Southwest that was tracking to uh, come to us. Um, and that money was going to go into the Fund 400 and finished facilities. Um, so we'll take a look at how that shapes up as we get more information from the state. Um, actually, I did receive an email late this evening uh, in the five o'clock hour from someone from Capital Advisors. I'm a colleague of mine from Capital Advisors in Sacramento, and his indication and his message without going into detail is that uh, there, there is looking, the state should probably release some information very soon around flexibility in the LCAP. So that sounds like it's going to be very helpful news based on what I'm reading here on my screen. Um, and we'll, that should come out soon. Actually, we have a, super, a county superintendent's meeting tomorrow and the folks from Capital Advisors should give us an update. And so we're looking for that support. That does give us flexibility to how we can move money from certain projects to make sure we take care of the most important, especially, especially you know, making payroll happen for all of our employees who are providing all these services, instructional services and support services um, and in all these different affairs. So um, we, we just wanna make sure that uh, we, we've, uh, it's on our, our, our watch and we're paying attention to these, these uh, up as they come forward. I have a, just a comment or a question. In regards to uh, being reimbursed by the state, we're still in the queue. Has there been any word out there whether they, they're pausing or uh, suspending that, uh, those reimbursements until they further know how, how the, what the state of the economy for the state will be? Um, yes, we are in the queue with our applications, but uh, we are down the queue in terms of our projects. Our projects are in different levels of funding from the state. But I believe that the governor wishes to issue another a round of bonds in order to get this economy going again. That by releasing these bonds and getting these bonds back into construction, he's going to support the economic uh, uh, support or the, uh, of the state. So he, he wants to get those bonds out to school districts so we can start building schools. Okay, thank you. So just to add to that, um, one of the things that was very interesting about the stay at home order when it first came out is that certain elements of our economy was excluded from that. And one of those is public works. And our STEM building is considered a public work. Therefore, uh, we never slowed down the work. As a matter of fact, if you drive by the STEM building, they are, right. there are a lot right. of trade yeah. folks out there. And what that means is all of those people are getting paid. The truck drivers delivering materials are getting paid. And all of that production is still happening. And that means money in those people's pockets to go out and spend on their personal expenses. And those companies have income to pay their employees. Mm -hmm. So and it's all the way down the supply chain. And we see that that's why Home Depot and Lowe's are still open because that's part of the local supply chain for construction. So uh, we do um, are hopeful that the state will keep that on a priority because that does help fuel the engine um, for keeping revenues flowing into the state. Every time those corporations are receiving money from 
our projects, that's income they report, which is then taxable. So that also keeps driving that economy forward. So um, we're, we're in good shape in terms of, of the STEM building. Um, and it's just hopefully that uh, those will get an update on when those will happen and, the, and it will come forward. As you know, back in March, the Prop 13, not the tax one, but the bond one for schools didn't pass. Uh, and so we believe that uh, they're going to give that um, a refit and and re and bring that one back. There's great need in our state, of course, for additional facilities. And we would be the beneficiaries of that for our current project uh, to get uh, that money that we can then use for other renovations, including the aquatic center down the road. Okay. I, I can't hear Ryan. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andrews. Bit of difficulty, but I'm back. Sounds like uh, we've concluded the discussion on the uh, budget portion. Uh, Mr. Preciado, I appreciate the fact that um, you're taking a very serious look at this and advising us of what a, a worst case scenario might look like, even perhaps a, a likely scenario. Um, I'm of the school of thought that we, we plan and work to be prepared for the worst, uh, but at the same time, we hope and work for a better outcome than that. And so it's just going to be a function of us getting the data that will allow us to make the right decisions for our school district. Um, but, and I believe now we will move on to the portion of our uh, agenda that is uh, the comments from our uh, bargaining units. And so if B, if you're available and ready, uh, we'd be interested to hear your thoughts on behalf of CSEA. The rest of you getting um, to learn how to do the Zoom, the Zoom thingy. B, we, um, we can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. So please go ahead. Okay, so keep it short and not because I want to get home because I'm already there. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of turmoil out here, a lot. I know I shared with Dr. Andrews the first um, week or so, the even the second week, uh, I was getting not so nice comments coming from uh, staff that were still working, uh, saying that I was sitting on my laurels, that I was home enjoying, that I wasn't doing anything for them, that, uh, you know, happy, happy, joy, joy. And I have sent those concerns to uh, Dr. Andrews and um, also the the district hasn't signed that MOU in regards to COVID-19 that would have alleviated a lot of the concerns that the members have as, as we speak. Not only um, we haven't met to discuss this um, a memorandum of understanding, all we need is a date and, and I know it addresses a lot of the concerns from the members. We, re we wanna request that meeting with the negotiating team I know that our classified members are the essential employees and they have uh, brought up a lot of their concerns. And I know they sent in a letter also asking for hazard pay. And I did make it clear that it's not hazard pay, it's time and a half. I know the MOU asked for double time, but this could be negotiating down to time and a half. Uh, I know that for a fact that Calexico has signed that MOU. Our Central Elementary signed it within a day of receiving that, that MOU. And we have minimal um, staff working. And um, here in the Valley, I believe we're one of the last ones they haven't signed that actual MOU. But I, I asked for, for the support of the district with their concerns uh, some of them are really nice and very understanding, but some of them are not very nice and not understanding at all. And, and you know what? I don't blame them. I, I do understand. They keep calling it hazard pay. I keep calling it. It's time and a half. But I asked the district to please help us with this and, and um, address some of these employees that keep bringing the concerns. And I know that right now we put a negotiations for the actual contract on the side, but this MOU is, is, is vital to our members as, as, as we speak. We weren't actually planning on, on 
extending this until the end of the school year. We thought we were all gonna come back uh, April 20th, but I think this is the time to actually address this, this very, very serious uh, memorandum of understanding. Well, B, thank you for those comments. Um, and I can assure you that uh, that's something that we're, we're all take seriously. And um, do you have any el anything else to add? Um, I know that uh, I had heard that we as CSEA needed to address that. Um, and, and we have, we have sent it, I think three times. And I, I, I asked, you know, CSEA to, to give the district some, some lead time because of, you know, the chaos that was going on. But um, I think the chaos right now is out here with our members that are very, very upset. And um, for them, there's no weekends because they call me, they send me texts, emails, messenger, Saturday, Sunday. So I don't get to take a day off. And I understand them. I, I understand them. I, I, I'm very concerned for them. And I want them to know that we have been trying. So just to put it on the record. And I want to thank you. And please stay safe and stay home. Thank you, B, very much. And, and you stay safe as well. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I am. All right. So at this time, then, uh, Mr. Duenas, if you're available. Hello. Uh, yes, Mr. Duenas. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm there. Okay, there you are. You're not the frog with a pipe in his mouth. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's what popped up at first. Okay. Can I turn my camera on? If if you'd like, sure. Thank you. Okay, and then you know you guys are ready. Don't mind. And, uh, okay, we're ready, Mr. Duenas. All right, good evening, esteemed board members and everyone listening in. Um, I want to first to commend the district office for their availability and willingness to work with our association when it comes to transitioning to our online teaching programs. We appreciate the understanding that flexibility is very important during this transition. Um, our students will have access to internet and devices at different times of the day. This has turned our workday into an environment where our normal contractual workday uh, no longer exists. I may be answering questions from students at 10 p.m. and post new assignments at 1 a.m. the night before and that is okay. Um, I believe that all teachers have received the technological support they needed in a timely manner. We just need to make sure that we continue to support our teachers during the entire period that we are in this new teaching environment. I wanted to share that as an association, we are looking forward to the agreed to side letter of assurances that will be describing the effects caused by this COVID-19 pandemic and how we intend on resolving these changes in work conditions. This uh, was what we initially asked for as an MOU, but it turned into a side letter, which is basically the same thing. Um, I have been in communication with Dr. Andrews about this and look forward to the finished product very soon. Uh, in reference to Arnold's comments on the budget, I think a possible solution would be for the district to consider slowing down the speed of the Southwest High School pool project. I understand that a commitment to the community has been made and the pool will be built, but the money expected to be received in the near future from the state that was set aside for this is more than likely in jeopardy. Uh, so delaying this project is probably a good game plan, but I would only be speculating about the actual impacts that we may or may not see. As you have all discussed, Governor Newsom's leadership will be progressive in nature and not reactive. I expect the bonds for construction to help the economy recover quickly. And perhaps this whole um, speculation is uh, actually a moot point. Uh, I also wanted to inform you that the retirement party on May 15th has been postponed and we will try to reschedule this event if possible. Um, that's all that I have for you guys today. Just uh, make sure everyone is safe, stay home as much as possible and stay healthy. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Duenas. We appreciate your leadership and you working with Mr. Andrews or Dr. Andrews rather to uh, resolve these issues and, and hopefully um, you're doing everything you can to stay safe and thank you for your commitment to our students thank you and are there any
other comments from the board at this time? I don't have any, thank you. Okay. None for me. All right, well then hearing none then at this time, uh, it is according to my computer, 728 PM on April 6th, 2020, this meeting will be adjourned. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Yes, please. Oh, oh chill, chill. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Take care. Be safe.